Yeah. After this, the price definitely gotta go up. Oh. What's up? Yeah. What you expect? I'm here with a very special guest today. I'm here with rapper Oboss. How are you? This uh, is love. I'm good, man. It's an interview. Yes, sir. Um, so you just released the remix of Hug the Streets featuring Rick Ross. Uh, how did you two link up? And um, were there any, like, conversations you two had? Oh, yeah, man. So, I mean, I'm a fan of hip-hop, like most people. You know, I've been doing music for a long time now. So I've watched Rosé's career from the, you know, from the time he came in with everybody. Every day we hustling all the way to where we are now. I've met Rosé about three or four times. And uh, we've always had little conversations about doing business with each other. So I have an EP that I'm working on now to be released next month or so. And it was just, you know, being an artist, man, on my Instagram, two, three in the morning, going through things. And I, I saw like a motivational post he had that day. And I just it clicked in my head. I'm like, you know what? I jump on my Instagram and say, yo, if you're a fan of Obas, Obas, tag Ross right now. Tell him I need a verse for my EP. Well, about 800 people tag Ross, you know what I'm saying? And like an hour later... I got a phone call from his manager, like, yo, you got his attention. What's up? You know what I mean? And uh, we just proceeded to start forward to try to make it happen. And that's how it came about. You know what I mean? And it was it was real cool, man. Real cool. Did you two, like, chop it up at all? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I had a quick phone conversation with him and then we met up. So it was a real brief conversation on the phone. Like, listen, I look forward. The record is dope. It's a great record. I look forward to getting on it. We'll talk when we see each other. And then when we got to the studio, I had booked the Hit Factory in Miami. And we had a good hour. It just happened to be that same day. He was doing his first interview with a podcast with DJ Khaled. I think DJ Khaled had him on his first podcast guest for this new big deal that he got with Amazon. So we was able to be in the studio to watch that go down and all that. So it was it was real cool, man. I had a good moment with him. You know what I mean? Got to hang out with the boss, pick his brain a little, you know, talk about some of the good things. He's excited because I think the, uh, his team was at the Super Bowl at the time. Not the Super Bowl, was trying to finish off to see if they could make the Super Bowl at the time, which they ended up doing. So, and, uh, yeah, my apologies. Tolu was calling. He wants to make sure I'm on the uh, on the interview with you. That's dope. Um, yeah, man. Now, taking it back, like, when did you actually start rapping? Oh, man. So I started rapping in 1998, man. I was 16 years old. I was a freshman in high school. And, uh, yeah, man, a friend of mine used to always rap. We used to always walk to the bus, and he would always just mumble. I just heard him mumble and stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? He said, I'm freestyling. He's like, I'm freestyle. It's the new thing. I'm like, man, stop that. You know, because I never thought about music. I was a sports. I used to play sports. And he's like, yo, just try it. So I started to try it with him because eventually you with your friend, you're going to try it. And I used to notice, though, every time I did it, he always leaned in a little more. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, that was good. Yo, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And before I knew it, I just started really doing it by myself. So when I was about 15, 16 years old, now, yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Um, your name Obas. Uh, is it Obas or Obas? Obas. Only believers achieve success. It's an acronym. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask, like, where'd that come from? So I, I, I'm a, I'm a fan of Tupac, and uh, back in the day, Tupac was very big on acronyms. Right, he would take a word and break it down. You know what I'm saying? Um, like the word niggas. You know, obviously, a lot of people consider that a bad word. Well, Tupac flipped it. He called it Never Ignorant Getting Goals Accomplished. And he wrote a book. And I seen that in the book. And I'm like, damn, if I ever join this rap game, I'm going to do that. So I would always think of stuff like, what is it? I wanted something simple, but I wanted something effective. And it only believers achieve success. You know, it was just my version of just saying, like, you got to believe it to be, you know, to achieve it. So it just came. I was playing with different words, and that's just how I came about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That's pretty dope. Absolutely. Thank you. So being from Danbury, Connecticut, who were some of your musical influences growing up? The Big Dogs, Biggie, Tupac, Nas, Jay-Z, Mob Deep, you know, um, Lost Boys, KRS-One. I grew up on the 90s era hip-hop. I'm an 80s baby. So it was all about lyrics, bars, storytelling, delivery, you know. But 
when I really jumped off the porch at like 15, 16, it became LOX, Locks, D Block, you know what I'm saying? JD Kid Styles, P. Sheik Luch, those guys were really the ones because at that time I was active outside. But it was always Biggie and Pac and Jay and Nas because. You know, at that time, it wasn't about money. It was all about skill set, you know what I mean? And the fact, the way they could navigate through that microphone, I fell in love with hip-hop, man. Those are my influences, the icons, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, like, so that's, like, the older generation, of course. Uh, what is, what is your opinion on, like, the new generation of hip-hop? Man, I, I, yo, I got love for the new generation, man. I like I like Lil Baby, you know what I'm saying? I like Roddy Rich. I'm a Meek Mill fan. I like Drake. You know, I like Young Thug's creativity. Of course, I love Future, like a lot of us do, for the music he puts out. I like the new Young Gunners, man. I'm watching a lot of um, Young Gunners coming up from Miami right now, Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, King Vaughn. You know what I mean? Dirk. So I'm very in tune, man. I like what's happening all over the board. I like the Young Spitters. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, What are some artists you're, like, eager to work with? Oh, man, I'd love to work with uh, guys who do a lot of harmonizing. You know I'd love to work with Rod Wave. I'd like to work with the uh, Little Baby, The Baby. I'd like to work with some of the girls, too. I'd love to work with Meg, Meg the Stein. I'd like to work with Cardi. But I'd love to work with, obviously, the guys that I grew up on, Jay-Z, Nas. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got Ross on the bucket list. I yeah. checked that yeah. off. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. But, yeah, some of the new dudes, too. I really wanted a collaboration with Nipsey Hussle. I had just had a conversation with him three three months before he died, man. And that's just one collab that broke my heart that I could not get. But rest in peace to the God, Nipsey Hussle, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, what was that conversation like? Uh, what did you guys talk about? It was a brief convo. I think I only had about three minutes of his time. He, I came to a show in New Haven, Connecticut. And it was uh, it was it was cool. I introduced myself. I told him I was independent. I owned my own company. I was signing myself, and I followed his blueprint. And I I look forward to doing a song. I, you know, honestly, I got a quick story with Nipsey, right? So when Nipsey first had started, he had just dropped this song. It was his first song, and he put it on World Star. I remember that we went crazy. So the week after he put it on World Star, he came up to a show in New York for Queen Latifah. And that was back when he was just by himself and he had a bag of CDs. And the crazy part is I had a bag of CDs. I was grinding too. And I remember me giving him one and he gave me his and he had this big gold chain on. And I was like, yo, I see you at the top. And obviously since then his career just elevated, you know what I mean? But when I re-saw him again, I told him about the story. He remembered the Queen Latifah. He didn't remember the bag of CDs though. You know what I mean? <laughs> But that was real cool. I, I saw him who I was. He, he gave me his number, his manager's number. He took my number. And we were supposed to be doing some business with each other, man. And it just never worked out like that. You know, life be like that sometimes. That's a dope story, bro. So being from, like, Danbury, Connecticut, and you being a part of, like, the whole uh, ba battle rap scene, uh, can you talk more about that experience and that time in your life? Yeah, man, it was 05, right? And I was trying to create a name on the scene. And um, the only way I, I really knew how to do it was to say, you know what, I got to do something that kind of shocks people to believing in my skill set. So it just happened to be the radio station in Connecticut is Hot 93.7. And one of the guys, his name was Kid Fresh. He was one of the hosts. He had a great spot from 6 to 10 every day. And he had just announced how he was going to start doing rap battles for the local artists to gain traction and get a buzz. So that was it. He spoke to me. Once he said that, I said it was on and popping. So I showed up to the first battle. I won the first 11 battles. You know what I'm saying? It is well documented. I went on the battle like 37 different guys. I lost twice. One was a draw and one I just lost. He did me dirty. He did me bad, but it was good. You know, I had to take that and I learned and I came back and got him the next time. So it was dope. It was one year, real brief, but it was real intense. It set my foundation in Connecticut. They knew that I was a real MC. I didn't come to play. And I was able to transition to that to really writing songs. You know what I mean? Was there a, like, did you have any difficulties, like, converting from a battle rap MC to, like, an actual artist? Not really, because the thing with me is I'm, I'm a real writer. I actually had a harder time to being a battle rapper. See, back then, the battle rapping was a little different than it is now. Like, nowadays, it'd be hard to be a battle rapper for me. These guys are so creative with how they do it now. Back then, it wasn't really about that. It was about getting the crowd involved. 
So I had to figure out a way to make sure when I battled somebody, it wasn't about the lyrics. It was more so about trying to embarrass them and getting the crowd involved. But being that I'm a writer, I love writing music. I'd be able to write poems, stories, music. So that was a very easy transition for me. Uh, what's been motivating you to like keep going after all this time? Man, um, I just had a daughter, man. I just had a baby girl a year Congratulations. ago. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Her name is Kayla. And she's my motivation now. From the moment I found out we were going to have her, I just shifted focus. It just made me think about legacy. It really made me think like, man, this is bigger than me. It's bigger than my dreams of standing on a stage performing in front of people. This is about what old boss is going to leave behind, tangible for generations to come. So it's my daughter, you know what I'm saying? The need to make sure her her future, her future siblings secure set is all the motivation I need to get to it. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, what are some of your goals for 2021? 2021, man, I'm really trying to become a global artist. You know, I'd love to be well above hundreds of millions of streams. I would love to have a viable fan base. I want to do a world tour. I want to do a national tour. I'd love to get some good endorsements going and I'd love to, for my music to really travel. That's my goal. My goal is to just be a global artist that has a viable fan base that really loves me and, and you know, loves the music that I do and we just keep it pushing and growing from there. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, what's next for you? And the next is to be able to set Obas Music Group up into a conglomerate, a company that's able to help artists come in, set their own companies up, attain their own intellectual property, create their content, whatever that is in art, fashion, entertainment, music, be able to monetize that, keep ownership and grow. I just want the wealth to come back to the community, put others on and pay it forward. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate you for taking the time. Oh, yo, I appreciate you for having me, man. And make sure to let the world know Hug the Streets feature Rick Ross out right now on all platforms. Stream it, share it, like it, all that good stuff. Oh, yes, boss, sir. man, new album coming soon. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. After this, the price definitely got to go up.